What's up everyone, Alex here. Crystal Story Dawn of Dusk is an interesting game that looks like it plays like a lot of other games out there. It looks like it plays like a Zelda game when you explore the world, but doesn't. And when you fight a boss, it looks like it plays like Battles in Undertale, but doesn't. This might come as a shock to anyone who has seen its trailers and expected an involved RPG in the same vein as Chain Echoes and Sea of Stars before it. But where Crystal Story Dawn of Dusk truly excels is its ability to capture nostalgic gameplay moments while delivering a fun adventure that's more akin to a point-and-click adventure game than a traditional RPG. But first things first. Crystal Story Dawn of Dusk is releasing on January 12th on Steam and is developed solely by Fred Brown at Bread Frown Games. The footage that you're seeing right now is from the Steam version of the game, which was provided to me by the developer. Crystal Story Dawn of Dusk starts innocently enough. You play the role of Mina, a young firestarter, whose future is forever changed with the disappearance of a young boy, whose visage haunts her at almost every turn. Determined to find the boy, Mina explores numerous spooky and creepy locales with the hope of finding him, instead unraveling an age-old mystery that has the potential to plunge the world into peril. As hinted at earlier, Crystal Story Dawn of Dusk doesn't exactly play like Zelda or Undertale. Sure, at first glance, it might look like either game, but the way you play these sequences is, for all intents and purposes, different. For instance, while exploring the world, you're able to use Mina's fire abilities to momentarily stun your opponents, which allows you to thwack them with your sword to finish the deed. And while you do have the option to try and defeat your opponents with just your sword, the aforementioned 1-2 combo dispatches your foes a ton quicker. That said, there are other enemies on the field that require a tiny bit more effort to dispatch. Some enemies can only be defeated by lighting unlit lamps located around the four corners of the room you're in, while others can be used to help you get past obstacles. Needless to say, there is variety in dispatching your opponents while you're exploring. However, this isn't a game that you go play if you're looking for a challenge, as its gameplay difficulty is quite easy. Even with its Undertale-inspired boss battles, you can get by fairly easily even when making some poor choices. Where its challenges lie are in figuring out where exactly to go and how to go about doing so. And because Crystal Story Dawn of Dusk doesn't feature modern conveniences like quest logs and objective markers, it falls on you to figure this all out. It's in this sense that Crystal Story Dawn of Dusk's true genre reveals itself, a modern point-and-click adventure game with its combat serving as a side dish to the main course that is its environmental puzzles. And if you love puzzles like I do, you'll find that these are the more enjoyable parts of Crystal Story Dawn of Dusk. That being considered, I do think that the game could have nudged you in the right direction a few times, as there are several moments in the game where it deviates that might get players stuck for a good chunk of time. This is why I initially got confused when its developer told me that the game could take between 2-6 to six hours to complete, not knowing that the brunt of the game had puzzles to solve. This explains the huge variance between the completion times, given the variability of how quickly players can solve these puzzles. But perhaps the most striking part of Crystal Story Dawn of Dusk is its aesthetics, blending colorful 16-bit era-inspired pixel art alongside a Game Boy-inspired palette and minigames that seemingly represent the blight that's encroaching upon the land. The game also comes with a CRT filter that very faithfully captures the feeling of playing games on those devices, and there's certainly a good amount of novelty to be had when playing it in said mode. There's also some gorgeous pixel-heavy cutscenes that are peppered throughout the game that reminds me of the first time I saw the ending of Super Mario Bros. 2, and the crisp rawness of these visuals really appealed to my nostalgic side. Ultimately, Crystal Story Dawn of Dusk is interesting in that its combat-centric gameplay acts merely as impressions that call upon our memories of the reference games in order to help tie everything to its aesthetics, masking the fact that it's really more of a puzzle-based game rather than a traditional JRPG. But it's also because of this that the game won't be for everyone, as these realities will surely surprise gamers looking for the latter. All that said, Crystal Story Dawn of Dusk feels like an art house game of sorts, one that attempts to capture moments of gaming nostalgia 
in an attempt to offer something bold, which is a kind of bravery that I can appreciate.